Remember those HX711 boards I made some time ago? Expect you're wondering what happened. It's been almost two years, rather shockingly, since I made the video about them arriving. Well, when I discovered as I was testing them that there was an issue or multiple issues with them, I just lost interest in trying to sell them on. I know I always created these videos with the intention of perhaps providing them for sale, but with the issues with them, I just didn't want the hassle of them not performing as I wanted them to. So, and then life got rather busy, and so I just never got around to posting this video. Also, this video was filmed very much with the intention of being a how to use these boards video. And that now seems a little inappropriate if I'm not actually going to sell them. Otherwise, I've had great success with these boards on my parameters. This is version 3.3 .3 in the photo. And as you can see, the conformal coating is working very nicely. And that's about all I need to say really to introduce this video. So here it is. In this video I'm going to test the board and hopefully demonstrate what's different about it. First, I just wanted to say I'm not going to give any guarantee this board will fix all your noisy data issues. However, it is far more customizable than any other board available and so it should be much easier to do things that may help to remove noise from your data. First, let's have a look at the excitation voltage. I've designed this board to be run off 3.3 volts, which is much more common these days with the more modern Arduinos. And also, for example, if you only have a single lithium cell available as a power supply. I've connected this up to an Arduino just as a power supply for the moment. And we're starting off, I've connected it to 5 volts. Just to demonstrate, the excitation voltage will be still the 2.7, which this is by default. 2.7, as R1 is 10k and R2 is 8.2k. Now, as I said, this is designed to be run off 3.3 volts. So let's switch this to the 3.3 volts of the Arduino. And we should see that the excitation voltage will remain the same. 2.77, 2.78, with 3.37 as an input. Now, supposing you want to run this off 5 volts, and to get the best signal to noise ratio, it's better to use a higher excitation voltage, if you can, if it's suitable in this situation. So, a quick way to do that is to get an 8.2k resistor, so the same as R2, and just basically put it in parallel, so put it in the position of R2, like so. Obviously you'd solder it in nicely, but just for demonstration. Now I'm going to deliberately leave this on 3.3 just to show you what will happen if you do. So we have 3.37 coming in and the excitation voltage will be 3.36. So in that scenario, basically the onboard regulator here becomes completely useless and so any noise or fluctuations on this 3.3 volts or whatever you're using as a power supply will be passed on to the excitation voltage and so that will then end up in your data as well. So let's put this on to 5 volts as I've said. Now we should get, so we have 5 volts coming onto the board, around 4.7, and the excitation voltage should be around there, 4.3. So in that scenario, the onboard regulator is used and should work fine for getting as clean a data as you can. Next, let's look at rate. Now on this board, I've designed it so that by default, rate is high due to a pull-up resistor but on the back here is a solder jumper which you can make a connection across and that will mean that rate will be low as you ground the rate pin. 
Now unfortunately on this design I made the gaps between the solder pads here a little bit too big so they are fairly hard to solder across but much easier of course to break the link. Um, a component lead or a little scrap of wire across there will help. So I could solder across there and I've tested it and it works but what I'm going to do instead is connect the rate pin as we have it available here to the microcontroller. So I'm going to connect it to pin 8, 8 for rate. Now let's go on to the computer. I'm actually going to use a smartphone rather than screen capture on the laptop so that you know I'm not faking anything because you can actually see the Arduino. Before I go any further with this, just a little warning, if you're going to connect this rate pin to a microcontroller, make sure that the solder jumper is not grounded, otherwise you will overcurrent the microcontroller pin. Future update is to add a 1K resistor in series there, just to protect against that. Not sure how useful this feature is anyway, but it's there if you want to use it. So let's demonstrate if I connect this up. The Arduino is running my test code, which I will leave in the description. It outputs to the serial monitor every 10 samples, just to slow it down so you've got a chance of reading it. And we're getting some data. So the first is a timestamp, obviously. Second is the time in milliseconds between samples. Third, samples per second, and finally the actual data, which this is floating, so it's just randomness. Give it a 1, and we switch up into the high sample rate, so around 86 samples per second, higher than the data sheet, but uh, that's what we get with the board in its um, standard configuration using the internal oscillator. Next, let's use an external PWM signal from the microcontroller to control the sample rate instead of the internal oscillator. Now to do that, we need to cut the track here between the XI pin and ground, and we need to solder between the PWM pin and the XI pin. I'll be back when I've done that. When you're done, it should look like this. Don't worry when cutting this track, there are no delicate tracks in line with it, just the ground plane. Next thing we need to do is connect up the microcontroller. The 20 picofarad capacitor is already on the board provided. That decouples the DC component of the PWM signal. And the example code uses pin 3, but you can configure PWM on other pins if you want. And so let's connect that up to the phone and see what sample rates we're going to get. Now I've measured the frequency of the PWM to be 5.3 megahertz. So it's around half of the internal oscillator. And we're getting, wait for it to stabilize. 4.8 samples per second. I'll put it in high and we're getting around 38.39. Obviously these uh, Unos and Nanos are limited to 8 megahertz PWM signal. And finally another way to set the sample rate and that is to use this empty space here and solder on a crystal. And this is where I discovered that the crystal 3-pin version that I've been using successfully with these two boards just wouldn't work with my board or layout or whatever the issue was. I even took one of my boards and cut all the tracks to the solder jumpers on the back and soldered jumper-wise directly to the two pins and it sort of worked occasionally but not reliably. So that's one important thing to note, which I didn't really think about with crystals, is to keep the track length to the chip as short as possible and avoid too much copper. So that's the second mistake with this board. I should actually have not put these jumpers on the back and just use the connection between the component and the board as the solder jumper instead. So there'll just be dead ends running to there and solder if you need it.
So, what I ended up doing was ordering some two pin crystals, and although in this case these connections on the back actually proved useful, so I have soldered on a 18.432 megahertz crystal, and that seems to work absolutely fine. And finally, quick demonstration with it connected up to the phone, so you can see the sample rate. And there we go, we're getting, we'll zoom in a bit on that, we're getting around 133 samples per second with the 18 megahertz crystal. Overall, I'm reasonably pleased with this board, although all I've really done is create another not quite fully functioning board. And uh, that's it for this video, thank you for watching.